We all know the feeling of underwhelming boss battles, especially end boss battles. It's the moment the entire game has been leading up to, the last chance to make a lasting impression and what should be the toughest challenge of them all, but you occasionally get that title where all of that just falls flat, and you're left with a sour taste in your mouth as the boss doesn't really seem to offer all that much resistance at all. Hey guys, Arcade Cloud here, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 easiest bosses in video games. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with some friends. It's free. At number 10, we have Pinwheel from the 2011 title Dark Souls. In a game notorious for its hard boss difficulty to the extent that the game has sort of become a running joke for difficulty in games earlier in the year, Pinwheel stands out as being one of the easiest bosses in the series, with the fifth lowest HP out of any boss in the game, though definitely one of the creepiest. Pinwheel, located in the catacombs, stands in the player's way of reaching the Tomb of the Giants. Being the easiest boss in the game, Pinwheel has become noteworthy among fans of the game, with almost all players criticizing its easy difficulty, though quite a few loving the design and general ambiguity of the boss. The boss, once killed, will drop the Rite of Kindling, Mask of the Child, Mask of the Mother, and Mask of the Father. The drops are pretty interesting when compared to the way the boss looks. Pinwheel seems to be made out of three separate beings fused together, and the individual masks support this. Coming in at number 9, we have Bowser from the original Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Everyone loves Mario. It's an iconic game franchise and one that I've played a bunch on various different platforms. But let's not kid ourselves here, the Bowser fight from the NES is stupidly easy. Easy. It essentially consists of jumping over the King Koopa, jumping on an axe, and letting him plunge into the fiery depths below, over and over again. Sure, the level gets harder as you progress, and platforms that shield you from Bowser's attacks are removed, but the fight consists of a really simple objective that's not particularly challenging to get to. Bowser is legitimately a great enemy, and his appearances in future games make the fight more challenging than just jumping onto an axe, and the original NES version of Super Mario Bros. is a really charming and innovative title, but it doesn't distract from the fact that the Bowser fight is incredibly simple. I mean, the Bowser fight in Super Mario Odyssey is basically antithetical to the NES version. Action-packed, intense, and much, much harder. People might say that I'm expecting too much from a Mario game, but Odyssey was definitely a masterpiece, and I think you'd be hard-pushed to find someone who doesn't agree with me on that. Next up, at number 8, we have 343 Guilty Spark from Halo 3. An AI system with the memories of the character Chakas, 343 Guilty Spark can be destroyed in just three hits from the Spartan laser that Johnson throws to the player to destroy him with. Guilty Spark is a boss in the final moments of the Halo 3 campaign, known to the Covenant as the Oracle that attempts to kill Johnson after he ignored Spark's warning that firing would destroy the Halo ring. The player is left to face Spark alone, who makes it clear that he intends to follow protocol in claiming that the Halo ring is his. There's a lot of backstory to the Halo series that players unfamiliar with the franchise probably won't understand, but we definitely recommend picking this game up, even in spite of the ridiculously easy boss. Also, we did an excellent In 3 Minutes video on the Halo franchise, you should totally go check it out. At number 7, we have Big Bob bomb from Super Mario 64. Mario's second inclusion on the list, Big bob bomb is a laughably easy boss when the player knows what to do. To defeat him, simply walk behind him, pick him up, and throw him onto the ground three times. After defeating him, Mario will earn a star and can progress through the rest of the game. This fight is the first boss battle in Mario 64, and was Big bob bombs first of many appearances in the Mario franchise. In the DS version of Mario 64, the bob bomb can be beaten in the same way, although earning the Yoshi star requires throwing three bob bombs the boss sends out back at him. The boss seems to have been met with a bit of difficulty from players, despite the easy nature of the fight. Allegedly, a lot of players were left confused as to how to throw the boss, and where to throw him, and so on. This is, of course, understandable, but once the goal is known, bob is a really easy boss, so he earns the seventh spot on our list. At number six, we have Wispy Woods from Kirby's Dream Land, a boss that can be easily beaten in 30 seconds in the boss of the first area of Dream Land, Green Greens, full marks for creativity with that name. Wispy Woods is a recurring character in the Kirby franchise, but it's his first appearance in Kirby's Dream Dreamland for the Game Boy that earns him the sixth spot on this list. Wispy Woods is commonly regarded as being one of the easiest bosses in Kirby games due to not being able to move and having a limited range of attacks. Wispy will drop apples and shoot air puffs at Kirby, and Kirby must inhale the former of these to fire at Wispy for the win. Touching the boss anywhere other than his nose won't even injure Kirby, making him an incredibly weak boss. At number five, we have Mysterio from the Spider-Man 2 game. Mysterio is by far the weakest boss we've 
we've seen on the list so far, the battle commencing with Mysterio telling the protagonist to prepare for their death as his three health bars fill up at the top of the screen. But the character can be defeated in just one punch, falling to the ground in dramatic fashion and asking Spider-Man nicely whether he could not be hit again. Spidey recognizes Mysterio as Quentin Beck, a common incarnation of the villain in Marvel titles, and that's pretty much the whole fight over. The entire thing lasts around 10 seconds all in all. Unlike a later inclusion on the list, this is played as a joke and is genuinely funny because of its running time. It doesn't feel like a fight wasted because of how off guard it catches you. This is an example of a joke boss done right, and it's just great. At number four, we have Papyrus from, un uh, excuse me, I mean Starman Jr. from Earthbound. Sure, Papyrus is a pretty easy fight, being an automatic skip if the battle has failed three times, but game theory jokes aside, Starman Jr. is an incredibly easy boss, the second in Earthbound. In this fight, Buzz Buzz's constant use of a psychic shield protects Ness from any harm, and the battle is won without any damage being taken off the player, despite the Starman Jr. using strong physical attacks. Once defeated, the Starman Jr. drops 16 in experience points, flying away in its capsule and returning the zoo animals back to their normal state. Earthbound's turn-based combat isn't overly skill-based as it is, I'd argue, but when you pair that system with a fight that's impossible to die in, I'm sure you can see why this game made the list. This is only number four, too. At number three, we have Golem Overlord from Chrono Trigger, or Master Golem as the boss is known in Japan. This boss appears on the Blackbird in the antiquity area of Chrono Trigger. The boss appears, counting down to what the player assumes to be an ultra-strong attack, but just as the attack is about to happen, the Golem Overlord forgets the attack due to fear of its heights and escapes after the countdown. Similar to the last two entries on the list, this boss can't hurt you at all, but defeating the Golem Overlord does result in some extra experience points, making it a worthwhile kill at the very least. The general consensus from players seems to be to use your party's strongest attacks, including the Triple Kick, Mega Bomb, and Leap Smash, to defeat it before it runs away. A pretty amusing inclusion to the game, though maybe one that goes on a little bit too long to be funny. At number two, we have Lucian Fairfax from Fable 2. Yet another inclusion on our list that dies in one hit, Lucian Fairfax is the main antagonist of the game Fable 2 and a member of the prestigious in-game Fairfax family. The fight, if it can even be called a fight, consists of the player finding Lucian in the final quest Retribution and, spoiler alert, stopping the ritual that Lucian is performing by using the music box from the beginning of the game. Lucian proclaims that the player is too late and that some mere trinket will not save them, however this turns out to not be the case as Lucian dies without any kind of fight regardless of whether the player shoots him before he finishes trying to reason with them or not. If the player decides to let Lucian go on with his spiel, Reaver will kill him with a not-so-apologetic, oh, I'm sorry, did you want to kill him? The fight seems to have been met with some distaste from players, however, with one video outright describing the fight as pathetic, an anticlimactic conclusion to the story of Fable 2. Folks, I'd like you to picture the most difficult boss of all time. That's right, for the number one entry, we've decided to change up the formula. This boss, which can only be described as nightmare fuel, is by far the most difficult boss in any game we've ever played, and I've played a lot of games. With the cry of slurpity slurp, I'm so sweet you can't lick me burp, Cloud and Candy soared into both the number one spot on our list and our nightmares simultaneously. I'm joking of course, Cloud and Candy is definitely the easiest boss of all time. Though debatedly looking like something straight out of a psychological horror game, Candy isn't much more than just a smiling ball of candy floss that jumps around. To win the battle, the player must lick them a few times. Cloud and Candy is often correctly referred to as the easiest game boss of all time, and I'm I'm sure you can see why. All of Candy's attacks will just push Yoshi back, and every lick restores some of Yoshi's health. If you die to this boss, I honestly don't know what to say to you, dude. Maybe stay away from Dark Souls. And there you have it, our list of the top 10 easiest bosses in video games. Do you agree? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos from Arcade Cloud on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Take care, and game on.